Hello students, how are you today? I hope you are doing fine. Welcome to Maulana Ajad National Urdu University. And today I am here with an interesting topic called Importance of Pronunciation in Communicative English. I know that like many of us do have a lot many of problems with pronunciation. Like um, different people do have different opinions about uh, pronunciation. Before we get into importance of pronunciation, like let me talk about uh, some of the important things uh, which are really useful for you. Like this session is going to be very much useful for all the MA, BA and BTEC and even Polytechnic students. Uh, I mean to say that like most of the speakers of English who are non-native speakers, it means whose mother tongue is not English. Because we always tend to make a mistakes when it comes to pronunciation. So before we talk about uh, importance of pronunciation in communicative English, let me talk about importance of English language. As you all know that English is an international language. It means to say that like English is a global language, it's everywhere. Like even though we have uh, in America, Britain and Australia and New Zealand and even other places, but it has become a global language. It shows the importance of English language, how like it has become quite important in each and everyone's life. And even it is also very essential and important to speak good language. English is a link language. It means like country like India, because as we have many languages in our country, like it is very, very important to have a link language. So English will work out to connect the people. So if you want to speak to other people, those who are not aware of your mother tongue, English will help you to communicate with them without having any communication barriers. And even if you want to pass any message, and if you want to share any ideas, and if you want to share any exchange of information, that will help you a lot. Like English used to be as second language in our India, but the, uh, it has completely changed now. English has become an official language in our India because everywhere, like most of the administrations, uh, English has been taking place. Like if we want to uh, send a letter and even if we want to receive a letter, like most of the administration like places, okay, like English has become an official language. That's the reason like English has been changed from second language to an official language. And let me talk about even another important point about uh, importance of English in Indian context. Uh, it is not only just in Indian context and in most of the places the entire world. English has become a trade and commerce language. I mean to say that like suppose if you want to speak to the other company's managers and even if you want to speak in business meetings, uh, it will help us a lot. Like even if you want to talk about your product and even if you want to share any information about uh, like your product, uh, English will help us and to as a link language and even it will also help us and to connect the people even other countries. And as we talked about importance of English language, let me talk about uh, why pronunciation is very, very useful and important for all the speakers, those who are really interested to learn a good English. I said good English. I know that like many of us and many students are able to speak English, but very few people or very few speakers use good English. What do you mean by pronunciation? I know that like different people do have different opinions about uh, pronunciation. Some people say that, why do we need pronunciation? Some people say that pronunciation is very, very important. And there is a de uh, big debate uh, regarding this pronunciation. But I mean to say that what exactly pronunciation is all about, uh, like to have that intelligibility. Like before we talk about all of them, let me focus on what is phonetics because this is the basic thing which I want you to learn about. 
Phonetics is all about scientific study of speech sounds. Coming to the pronunciation, pronunciation is all about uh, articulating each and every sound clearly and with intelligibility. I know that like many of us do have clear idea about all the 26 alphabet. Like according to alphabet, we do have five vowels. They are A, E, I, O, U. And coming to consonants, we have uh, 21 consonants. English is not like any other languages because as we have 26 alphabet, I mean to say that 26 letters in English language, those 26 letters represents 44 sounds. That's the reason it is very, very important to have an idea about pronunciation. That is why I said in the beginning of my class, like this is going to be very useful for all the MA, BA, BTEC and, and Polytechnic and others. Coming to the letters, I know that you are pretty much aware of like there are five vowels and 21 consonants. But what about uh, 44 sounds? According to these 44 sounds, uh, like there are 24 consonants uh, and 20 vowels. You would be surprising by listening to that, like there are 24 consonants uh, and 20 vowels. Uh, Yes, I'm not telling you wrong, but it's a fact because uh, all those 26 alphabet represents uh, 44 sounds. That's the reason we always feel difficult uh, with some sounds uh, which are not existing in our mother tongue. The sounds which are existing in our mother tongue, we never feel difficult because like our pronunciation is very clear. And as you all know that, what is language? Language is all about uh, to pass the message, to share our ideas, to exchange the information. So like if you are not able to pass the message, like if the conversation took place between encoder and decoder, encoder I mean to say that the one who speaks. I am the best example for encoder because I am speaking to you and you are the decoder, the one who receives the message. And so. Like if you are not able to understand what I wanted to say, like my efforts will go into vain. My efforts will go into, like will become useless. So it's very, very important to have uh, that intelligibility. Don't ever misunderstand me if I say that pronunciation is very, very important in communicative English. I mean to say that I'm not asking you to speak neither Britain speaker nor American speaker. Speak like an Indian, but make sure that you have uh, intelligibility in your language. Let me give you some examples. We love to listen to some of the speakers, uh, those who are really good at their accent and pronunciation. Why? Do you have any idea about it? Why do you listen to or why, why do you love to listen to them? Because it's all about intelligibility, clarity of their expression. Let me give you some examples, like take an example of Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. He is an Indian film actor. He speaks a very good English because the clarity, correct pronunciation, that's the reason we'd love to listen to him because of his pronunciation. And coming to the cricket commentators, I know that like most of you would love to listen, uh, watch cricket matches. Like Harsha Bugle, how many of you have heard about his name? I know that many of you and majority of you, those who love to watch cricket matches, he speaks a very good English. It's because his pronunciation and clarity of uh, expression. That's the reason we'd love to listen to them because we never feel bored listening to them us together. So it's very, very important to have that kind of pronunciation. I mean to say that intelligibility. That's the reason I just came with all these examples. Mr. Amitabh Bachchan from Indian film actor. The other one is Mr. Arsha Bogle, who is from cricket commentator. Like we'd love to listen to them. It's just because of clarity and good pronunciation. So it's very, very important to have a good pronunciation in our day-to-day -day English if you want to pass the message. As I already told you that language is meant for to pass the message to share our information, to exchange our ideas. So if you want to 
exchange the information, to share any kind of information with other guys uh, without any barriers. Uh, I want you to be good at very uh, good at pronunciation so that it would be very easy for you to exchange the information with decoder. Decoder means the one who receives the message. Like I know that like many of us do have uh, so many doubts. Some people do say that American English is a very good one. Some others say that no, British English is a good one. Others say that why should we follow others English? Let us have on more accent. Yes, it's a common, it's a tendency, human tendency that like to question and to have uh, so many doubts. But according to the English, standard model for English or P, received pronunciation, or BBC English, British Broadcasting English, NIE, neutralization of Indian English. You don't need to follow neither Britain speaker nor American speaker. Though we have worldwide a standard English that is the recent modified one BBC English, British Broadcasting English. So you, you don't need necessarily to follow them, but it is like you can follow this NIE neutralization of Indian English. Like in our India, we do have uh, that is NIE which talks about uh, that intelligibility in our language. So, I'm going to concentrate on three important rules of pronunciation. One is rule of aspiration. Ha! This is the aspiration is all about. It means that adding extra puff of air. The second important one is plural markers. S, ES, okay, ES and ES. And past tense markers, ED. So these are the three important rules which I'm going to focus uh, in this class. What is aspiration? Like this is the major difficulty with non-native speakers of English. I mean to say that whose mother tongue is not English. So they always uh, try to have a different pronunciation. Like what, uh, because many of the students do not have an idea about uh, what exactly aspiration is. Aspiration is all about greater breath force. It means that adding extra puff of air. <gasps> this is the best example to feel that extra puff of air on particular sound. When p, t, k occur in the initial position of a stressed syllable, Please do remember, I'm telling initial position of a stressed syllable and are not accompanied by any consonants like s, r, and l. They are aspirated. So it's very, very important to remember that initial position of a stressed syllable. It may be in middle of the word, but make sure that that particular syllable carries stress. Like if that particular syllable carries stress uh, and those part uh, k, uh, should be aspirated. Let me talk about this Indian or wrong pronunciation. Many of the students, uh, they always make mistakes when it comes to these words because due to lack of experience or they are not aware of these phonetic rules. Have a look at these examples. Paper, Table, content, apartment, historical, appointment, testify, purpose, temptation, participate. If you listen to this kind of pronunciation, do you really get interest? I don't think so because there is no beauty. It will not attract to you. But what went wrong with that pronunciation? Because I read with all those words uh, without having any aspiration on particular sounds. But let me read out the correct pronunciation according to the standard English that is BBC English, British Broadcasting English. Suppose if you listen to a native speakers of English, they never say paper, they say that paper. Can I have that paper please? 
that's the major difference between native speaker and non-native speakers of English. So, like as I already talked about the rule, it's very, very important to have that idea when you articulate those particular sounds and syllables. It's according to Britain English, we have to pronounce them paper, table, content, apartment, historical, appointment, testify, purpose, temptation, participate. So, do you find the difference between both native speakers of English and non-native speaker? That is wrong pronunciation and correct pronunciation. When you try to add that extra puff of air, you will get the beauty of pronunciation. That's the reason we'd love to listen to others, those who are very good at pronunciation. Coming to the plural markers, this is also one of the important things one has to know about the pronunciation. Like many of the students, many of the teachers, and many of us, because as we are not exposed to, or we are not trained to, we make mistakes when it comes to even plural markers. Don't ever misunderstand me when, when I say that plural markers. I'm not going to talk about any grammatical rules, but I'm talking about how these plural markers are very, very important in communicative English when it comes to pronunciation. There are three ways of pronouncing the plural suffix s. Rule one, if the word ends in one of the voiceless sounds, p, t, k, th, f, then the plural marker yes attached to it is pronounced s. Please try to understand, I didn't say that it is yes, but I said s. We always keep in between forward slashes uh, these sounds. But when it comes to alphabet, we never use those slashes. So you may have uh, doubt regarding this uh, voiced and voiceless. When you have vibration in your vocal cords, uh, it means that it is a voiced sound. It's very, very important to identify whether it is voiceless or voiced. Like if there is no vibration, it means they are voiceless sounds. All the vowel sounds are voiced. So, p, t, k, th, f, all of them are voiceless sounds. That's the reason if plural marker or plural suffix, s is preceded by all these sounds, you have to say or you have to end up with s. Have a look at some of the examples here. Out of my experience, but majority of the Indian speakers or majority of the non-native speakers of English, they never feel difficult when it comes to a rule one. Because we tend, we got habituated to say them, they are like caps, bats, laughs, books, maths, tips. Here, in first word, sa is preceded by pa, which is voiceless. That's the reason we have to say s, caps. Similarly, in word bats, sa is preceded by t. And next, sa is preceded by f, which is voiceless. Again, in books, sa is preceded by k, which is voiceless. In maths, that is dental sound, which is voiceless, that is we say that we keep tip of the tongue in between upper teeth and lower teeth and say th. That's a sigh is preceded by voiceless dental sound, that is th, that is why we have to say maths. Similarly, tips, sigh is preceded by p. So in all these words, since sigh is preceded by pa sound, which is voiceless, we have to say s. Let's move on to second rule. If the word ends in one of the voiced sounds, b, d, g, the, v, n, m, l, r, or any vowel sounds, which are also voiced, then the plural marker, s, attached to it is pronounced z. Here, many of the 
students uh, tend to make mistakes because they are not exposed to. They always say s instead of saying z. But according to this phonetics rules, uh, like if sa is preceded by all the voice sounds uh, like b, d, g, d, v, n, m, l, r, and other vo uh, vowel sounds. As I already told you that all the vowel sounds are voiced. We have to end up with by saying z. But here, many of the students and many of the people, those who are not exposed to, they make mistakes. They say that, like I'm just giving you some examples about uh, wrong pronunciation, how they usually go wrong. They say that tubs, rooms, bags, wells, swords, dogs. Do you think that it's a correct pronunciation? I don't think so. According to the Britain English or according to the native English, it's wrong because saw is preceded by voiced sounds. That's the reason we have to end up with all the words z. Look at, uh, let me read out uh, according to the correct pronunciation. They are tubs, rooms, bags, wells, swords, dogs. Here, if you could observe them carefully, sa is preceded by ba, which is voiced. Sa is preceded by m, which is voiced. Sa is preceded by g, which is voiced. Sa is preceded by l, which is voiced. Sa is preceded by d, and sa is preceded by g. So, by looking at all these examples, I want you to understand where we always go wrong. You have to pronounce uh, like wherever we uh, sa is preceded by these voice sounds. You have to end up with by saying z, not s. Let's move on to third rule. This is also one of the important rules which I want you to understand because many of the students go wrong when it comes to even a rule third. If the word ends with a sibilant, sibilant means like when two sounds go together, like s, z, sh, j, ch, affricate, j. So these are all we call them, they always go together. That's, that's the reason we call them sibilant sounds. Here also, like sa, we, uh, sa has to be pronounced is, not sa. Let us have a look at these examples so that you can understand. And look at the first example that is badges. I'm just reading out like what is the wrong pronunciation. Usually, most of the students or most of the people, those who are not exposed to a good English, they mispronounce with all these words. They say badges, boxes, wishes, faces, buses, watches. But that's an incorrect pronunciation. But what is correct pronunciation? As I already told you that if ES preceded by any one of the sibilant sounds, Sibilant sounds means s, z, sh, j, ch, j. See, look at the here. Badges. Es is preceded by j, which is a sibilant sound. That's the reason we have to say is badges, boxes, wishes, faces, buses, watches. So, if you could observe. Uh, very carefully, all these examples, uh, all the words, uh, like all the es preceded by all the sibilant sounds. That's the reason you have to say is rather saying that es. The same rule applies even to the pronunciation of present tense, third person singular, and the possessive. Like you know very well about when it comes to grammar, like we always say that like routine things in simple present tense. Look at this, drinks. Sa is preceded by a sound which is voiceless, ka. So you have to say sa, that's correct. I'm not telling you that you are wrong because you, are, you got habituated to say that, uh, drinks. But look at the second example, shares. Here, since sa is preceded by voiced sound, you have to end up with z. Similarly, let, me, uh, let, let us move on to third example, bills. Sa is preceded by, it's a possessive one, but still, sa is preceded by 
voiced sound. That is why you have to say bills, it is not bills. Cats, here also we have possessive, sa is preceded by voiceless sound. So, you have to end up with by saying s. James, here also sa is preceded by a voiced sound. So, you have to say z according to the phonetic rules. Well, so far we have discussed importance of English language, importance of pronunciation, importance of language, then standard model for English and finally, we talked about pronunciation rules. Here we also explained rule of aspiration and plural markers. That is the end of part 1 of importance of pronunciation in communicative English. Thanks for watching. See you soon with part 2 of importance of pronunciation in communicative English.